This tutorial is going to revolve around sample rates. It is fitting that this would be the first topic in this series of tutorials, as it's also one of the first things that we do when we set out to capture a waveform. Notice here that the units are expressed in samples per second. If we go in settings, that little gear in the lower right, at the very top of the general settings page, you see that we have a choice of rate unit. Right now, as a default, it's in samples per second. But we have another choice. We can go with bandwidth in Hertz. Let's choose that for now. By the way, guys, right here in the top left, is a really uh, easy way to get back to our waveform. And now when we look at our choices, they're expressed in frequency, in bandwidth, in hertz. So prior to going back into the settings and reverting to samples per second units, okay, I want you to take a look here. We're at 75 kilohertz here when we're in the bandwidth mode, okay? Go in settings, change it back to samples per second, go back to our waveform, and notice here that it is 150 kilosample per second. Okay, So the samples per second are exactly double what the bandwidth in Hertz value is. Okay, So this is a good takeaway out of this particular lesson. We don't have to revert back and forth between samples per second and the bandwidth in Hertz, we know that two to one uh, relationship. So when we're say at 150 kilosample per second, we know that the underlying bandwidth that's being used is 75 kilohertz. That's quite handy. Imagine we had a voltmeter in one hand and a pencil in the other. And we would take a voltmeter reading and we would plot it. Take another voltmeter reading and plot it. And we continue doing that. Eventually, we'd have enough sample points to generate a waveform. So that's what HCOPE was doing here, right? Taking a bunch of sample points and graphing them, except that instead of just a few samples that we could physically do with a handheld voltmeter, an oscilloscope can do this thousands and tens of thousands, even millions of times per second. If we look at all these points, we notice that they're joined together by lines. In this case, smooth lines that curve and allow for like this sine wave to look nice and smooth. We have choices as to the type of line that joins these points. That's called interpolation. We're going to go into settings and we're going to have a look at those choices like right here, okay? So we were on sync interpolation, and that's why we were getting those smooth contours uh, forming a nice smooth sine wave. Next, let's try linear. Now notice that the lines are no longer curved between the points. They go into a straight line from point to point, okay? That's what linear interpolation looks like. Let's go back to settings. And this time, let's choose step. As the name implies, you can see that all the points are joined together in a staircase pattern, steps. 99% of the time, we're going to be using sync 
interpolation because it joins everything up smoothly. So we have here a 7.5 kilohertz sine wave. Okay. And we're using 150 kilosample per second as a sample rate. And you'll remember that the underlying bandwidth is half of that. So we have 75 kilohertz as a bandwidth here. 7.5 kilohertz frequency sine, 75 kilohertz of bandwidth, 10 times, just as that little formula says. Between here and there, that is a period. And it's supposed to produce a minimum of 10 sample points within that period. Uh, we've got that plus a few more. This is considered the minimum amount to ensure a proper definition of a waveform, that there are enough sample points to define it. Now there's another way to do this, all right? We can just go out and use our instincts or our experience a little bit and take a waveform. And then, if we have any uh, doubts as to whether or not we have enough sample points, we can go to this sample icon right here. Okay, I'll turn it on. H-scope allows us to see these points that make up the waveform when we turn on that icon, all right? And at a glance, we can tell if we've uh, just got kind of the right amount of sample points. No need to use a formula that way. So what if we undersampled? What if we use too few sample points? What would be the consequences of that? Well, let's do that. So let's have a look at what the consequence of using too low a sample rate was. See, that sine wave is all distorted because we've got like a sample point over here and kind of the next one here, another one there. And we're missing a bunch of stuff, okay? That's a consequence of undersampling choosing too low of a sample rate. What if we oversample something? So here's an example. You see how bunched up all of our sample points are? Like way, way too crowded. And Sample points are precious. We only have so many to use. In this particular case, with the HS512 Max that's connected to HScope presently, we have 32,000 sample points. Now, that's considered generous for uh, this price level of an oscilloscope, okay? Very generous, actually. And if we abuse that, if we use too high of a sample rate higher than what is required, not only are we wasting them, and not only is our waveform not going to look so good because this gets kind of a thick line and kind of all bunched up, but we're going to use that buffer, that 32,000 point buffer is going to get used in a short period of time. Like here, if we're using 7 million of them in a second, those 32,000 sample points are not going to last very long. They'll get exhausted. The consequence of too high of a sample rate is that we may not leave ourselves enough time on the page, on the screen, to capture the full length of the event. So, sample points are precious.
As stated earlier, the rule is to have about 10 sample points within a period here to define a waveform. But all rules have exceptions. Say within the context of that period, there was a detail that we would have wanted to have a little bit more definition to. A prime example of that is a pintle hump on a fuel injector waveform, right? It may have a little detail like this. For situations like this, if you want to see that kind of detail, you got to bump up the sample rate to be able to include this in there. So here at 150 kilosamples per second, if there was a little detail in here, there are better chance that some of these sample points would catch it and define it. So here I have a 1 kilohertz square wave. I'm using 19 kilosamples per second as a sample rate. And underlying that, we know that that would be very close to 10 kilohertz of a sample rate. So we have a 1 kilohertz square wave being measured with a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. That's kind of what the rule of thumb tells us. But if you have a look here, you know, we're, it, it's far from being perfect. And the problem lies like between here and here. There just are not enough sample points to define that. If we bump that up to say 75 kilo samples per second, all right? And we have a look. Now we have a lot more sample points and our square wave looks a lot better. Even though they look a little bit bunched up at the top, that's okay. We needed more sample points to define this more properly and to be able to get square walls on our square wave. To recap, if we use too low of a sample rate, we will not have enough sample points to well define the waveform. If we use too high of a sample rate, needlessly, then we're going to be quickly consuming the buffer. We're going to be using up those sample points far too fast. And we're not going to end up with very much time on the page, not much time on the screen for us to be able to fully see the event that we're interested in. So let me know guys, if you like this presentation style, if it's a good way to uh, get across the concepts, and we'll see you in the next installment.